So friends, I was in federal court in Washington, D.C. today, my old stomping grounds, for what was the first status hearing in Donald Trump's criminal case before Judge Tanya Chutkin since the Supreme Court ruled that official acts of a president enjoy immunity from prosecution. And the case was returned to Judge Chutkin to decide, okay, which of Donald Trump's crimes were official acts and which were not. And let me tell you, sitting in that courtroom for a little over an hour today, things did not go well for Donald Trump and his lawyers. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, as you're well aware, Donald Trump tried to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election, tried to deny Joe Biden his rightful election win. He tried to retain the power of the presidency unlawfully and unconstitutionally, and he was indicted on four felony counts for the crimes he committed. But then of course, he ran to the Supreme Court, his Supreme Court, at least the, you know, radical right wing justices, six of them. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. A president of the United States should have absolute immunity from being prosecuted for the crimes he commits against the American people. And the Supreme Court largely agreed with Donald Trump, the radical right wing bloc, and they said, you know what? For your official presidential acts, we think you should have immunity. You shouldn't be prosecuted for those crimes you commit in violation of our nation's laws and against the people of the United States. But what we need the trial court to do, trial court um, judge Tanya Chutkin, the presiding judge, what we need the trial court to do is hold a hearing, look at all of your crimes, all of your conduct, all of your acts, and decide which ones were official presidential acts and which ones weren't, which were unofficial, which were private, which were the acts of a candidate. And Judge Chutkin needs to litigate all of that, all of that, make rulings, and then send it back up to the Supreme Court because you know whatever Judge Chutkin rules will be appealed again to the Supreme Court. So today was the first day that the case was back in the trial court before Judge Chutkin to set a schedule and talk about the process. Okay, how are we going to go about litigating this issue? Judge Chutkin asked the parties, the prosecutor Jack Smith and Donald Trump's criminal defense attorneys, the whole team of them headed up by John Lauro. And the, the hearing started with the prosecutor, Thomas Windham, saying, Judge, really the only way that makes sense is we're going to file a brief that lays out all of Donald Trump's crimes, all of his conduct, all of his acts, all of it, not just the little bit that we've disclosed in the indictment, all of it that is thus far undisclosed, unrevealed, so you can decide which of the acts are official, which are unofficial, which should enjoy immunity, and which clearly do not deserve immunity, and that's the way we propose. And by the way, the prosecutor said, we're prepared to file this brief with all of this information, including, as he said, we're going to disclose grand jury transcripts, interview transcripts, FBI 302s, which are written records of the interviews the FBI conducted, documentary evidence, and lots of other stuff that we're going to disclose to you and publicly so we can litigate the issue the Supreme Court told us to litigate and told you to decide. And we can file all that in about three weeks. By September 26th, Judge Chutkin, in essence, said that sounds wise and reasonable, a reasonable approach to litigating this issue. And then she turned to the defense and asked them, well, when do you want to litigate and how do you want to litigate the issue of which of Donald Trump's crimes, which of his acts are official and which are not. And the defense in essence said, oh, we want to litigate that. Never. 
but certainly not before the presidential election. And friends, it didn't take much for Judge Chutkin to tell the parties exactly what she thought about a proposal regarding how to proceed in a criminal case that somehow was tethered to an election cycle. And here is how that exchanged be between John Lauro and Judge Tanya Chutkin played out in court. John Lauro, Donald Trump's lead criminal defense attorney, said to Judge Chutkin, it's not fair that they, the prosecutors, get to put in the public record this information, meaning all of the information about Donald Trump's crimes, his acts, his conduct. It's not fair. They get to put it in the public record at this very sensitive time in our nation, which prompted an audible response from Judge Chutkin along the lines of, ah, in other words, there it is. I understand what's going on here. And here is what Judge Chutkin said. An electoral calendar, the timing of an election is not relevant here. This court is not concerned with the electoral schedule. That is nothing I'm going to consider. And friends, this argument by Trump's attorney, John Laura, was really a political argument, masquerading as a legal argument. You know, he desperately does not want the prosecutor to be in a position to disclose any information to the public, to the American people, to the voters about the crimes and the conduct, the behavior of Donald Trump so this litigation can proceed. Litigation that the Supreme Court directed Judge Chutkin to undertake. John Lauro and by extension Donald Trump want to hide, want to bury, want to secrete that information from the American people and the voters until after the election. And John Lauro could tell that he was on the losing end of this argument because Judge Chutkin had concluded there's nothing unfair or inappropriate about the prosecutors providing to me in a public filing the information I need to litigate and resolve the exact issue the Supreme Court told me to litigate and resolve promptly, forthwith, get it done. So no, we're not going to tie any schedule in this case to an election cycle, Mr. Lauro. And that prompted John Lauro to say the following. Judge, if you adopt special counsel's recommendation, in other words, letting them file this public document in late September revealing all this evidence about Donald Trump's crimes and conduct and behavior, if you allow this, it will be fundamental unfairness never before seen in a district court. Friends, doesn't that kind of sound like an unhinged 2 a.m. social media post from Donald Trump as opposed to something an experienced lawyer would say in court? Well, Judge Chutkin went on to conclude that there's nothing unfair about how the government is proposing to proceed. And here's what she said. She said, I understand the prosecutor said they can file this public notice revealing all this information by September 26th in about three weeks. Um, that sounds appropriate. So I will issue a scheduling order promptly as early as later today, setting out the schedule. So now, friends, we are just waiting to see what date Judge Chutkin sets for that public filing by the prosecutors that will tell us a lot, a whole lot, about the crimes, the behavior, the conduct of Donald Trump on and around January 6th that was designed to try to steal the 2020 presidential election. I look forward to reading that public filing, that public document, because before we head to the polls, Donald Trump shouldn't be able to finagle, orchestrate that information remaining secret, hidden from 
the American people or from the voters. And as Judge Chutkin said, the timing of the schedule she sets will have nothing to do one way or another with the upcoming election. But the substance of the information that will be revealed as part of this investigation will have everything to do with Donald Trump's suitability to ever retake the reins of governmental power. Yeah, the American voters deserve to know who they're voting for and who they're not voting for. Because justice matters. Friends, tomorrow I'm going to talk about what the discussion was in today's court hearing. I've run out of time today. Um, What the discussion was about Judge Aileen Cannon's decision to dismiss Donald Trump's classified documents case because, gosh, special counsel's just not a lawful thing, in her opinion. What was said and how the parties, the prosecutor, the defense attorney, and the judge wouldn't even utter Judge Aileen Cannon's name, but they did talk about Justice Clarence Thomas. I don't often put teasers at the end of my Justice Matters videos, but I will be taking that topic up first thing tomorrow morning, and I'll put out an early Justice Matters video about what I saw and what I heard on those fronts today in court. As always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.